It began as a simple question, how can we break down barriers and bridge the gap between classical musicians and jazz musicians? Getting a string quartet and a jazz trio to play together as a seven-headed animal. So like, it wasn't just like, like oh, okay, we're gonna have a like, string quartet playing like little textures around while the jazz guys improvise. Like, but it was like having us all, like we're all improvisers and we're all classical chamber musicians. It was clear to me from the start that I couldn't just put these people in the same room together and hope something magical would happen. It had to go deeper. I met with each musician individually every week for three months, and I started teaching them about the other world. So for the jazz musicians, I taught them about classical music, and for the classical musicians, about improvisation. I could hear myself trying very different things and being okay with it. Willingness to try anything, um, listening better to whether if you want to be a texture or if you want to be a main line. So it was sort of a meeting in the middle. And not sort of a forsaking what we already knew how to do, but using what we already knew how to do to build on this new thing that we were creating. So yeah, so you're finding keys. some things, right? <laughs> yeah. So what are the ch what are the challenges here? Maintaining the key. <laughs> with the jazz musicians, Lee and Max, I talked with them about classical music. We listened to some uh, some pieces and looked at the the charts to follow along, and just kind of got uh, got an idea of what that world is like, and how you know little things. That I found I found crazy where um, they don't count up tunes and just bringing in uh, you know the piece just by a nod <laughs> and and knowing the tempo through something like that was that I blew my mind. They were still there. Yeah, because your ear doesn't realize what your ear actually does is when it hears a sound and it hears all these partials like this, it converts it into sounding like one sound. <laughs> After all of these lessons, it was time to put everything together. In one of the first lessons with Audrey, we discussed what would it sound like to play music in outer space, something that's in the void among the stars, and some beautiful music started happening when she had that image in mind. And so what I did then is I took some of the details from that improvisation and I flushed out the notes a little bit so that we could play in a larger context with the entire group. the jazz players, I wrote a piece modeled off Mozart, and so we actually worked on taking the jazz trio format and incorporating that into the chamber setting. So I did learn a lot in the process, um, and I think it just it gave me an extra sort of sensitivity to playing certain melodic figures uh, and knowing like how to blend in a different way, watching the way they breathe, uh, watching the bow. Okay, that's where it is. <laughs> Breathing with a phrase, being able to see how fast something will be just by how the conduct, you know, whoever's conducting or cueing or sniffing or whatever um, is moving their body. Like, 
that was kind of blew my mind. I can't play jazz yet, and that wasn't the goal of this, but I feel like there's a way that I could interact with jazz musicians in a fulfilling way, rather than I'm me sort of hanging on to random chords or just, you know, holding people back. I, I feel like I can interact with jazz musicians and make something really cool, even if it's not jazz. I'm very sorry about that. No, it's so beautiful. I love that. It's kind of something that I think you need to jump in and into an environment where you feel comfortable and perfectly okay and there are a lot of great people and that's, this was exactly it. We spent many hours together doing lessons, master classing different ideas and working together, uh, coming from different perspectives. And that's the true beauty of this project. This process can be a vehicle for change for all of these musicians.